When I was seven, upon hearing that my family was to be uprooted for the third time in my life across the country, my farewell rebellion to my little Ohio suburban home was to do the opposite, to plant what I hoped would become an apple tree. A few brown seeds of the last apple I ate went into a hole in our flower bed I dug with my grubby little hands, desperate to return one day and discover quite literally the fruits of my labor. But at seven, I knew nothing about gardening. Nothing about the proportion of sun to soil to water, and certainly nothing about patience. Yet the hope I had that it would blossom is something I think we could extract. Something we could make the sweetest nectar from. Something to make us pause for a moment and drink in the innocence. The simplicity. Go back to the basics. Go back to the possibility. No. The certainty. That planting a seed can and will create a new and better world. So tell me, what hopes did you have for your world at seven years old? Did you dream about planting seeds of your own? Did you tend to your own gardens of promises beneath which rivers flowed? What trees were you forced to leave behind but naively trusted to bloom in your absence? When was it that you or a loved one were plucked from this innocence like weeds? Which of you had to withstand the unimaginable for your naivete to combust? What new story was it that lit the first match beneath you? How old were you when you started fanning the flames of your own personal fire? How many hearts did you leave kindled on your path to justice? Which of this world's most horrible abominations did you put a torch to? More importantly, at what point did that fire engulf you? When did you hope to find yourself in the thick of the blaze only to lose yourself in the darkness? How deep were you in the inferno before the heat burned you up and burned you out? Listen, I've written a lot of poems about rage and fire and the anger required to tackle the monsters we only thought would haunt us in our dreams. I too have fought and cried and tried to wake up but found myself on the front lines, on the phone, online, with the leaders, the lava cooking me alive and I too have daydreamed about what the world would look like if we burned burned it all down and started over. I too have burnt up my last flickering candle, romanced by the poetry of the destruction, the hypnotic dance of the flame, eager to warm up my cold heart, striving to feel something besides despair. And yet there's a reason burnout contains the word burn. There's a reason fire only takes us so far. When we are left with a colossal pile of ashes and charred remains, asking now what? No, that it is not fire that will create a new world but water. Because even after the great flood, a dove still returned to Noah's ark with an olive branch. Did you know that as babies, water makes up 78% of our bodies, dropping to 65% by the time we reach our first birthday? Maybe that explains why we are so full of life as children, so full of virtue. What a gift that the answer has been gushing within us this whole time, that the sea ebbing and flowing within our very bodies has given us a lesson in balance from the moment we were born. Did you know that water asserted its dominance on this planet millions of years before fire ever could? Did you know the reason you can see the Grand Canyon from space is because a persistent ocean, now long gone, knew it could literally change the world? Water is the most versatile thing to ever exist. It is the only major substance that can take on all three forms of matter, adapt to its environment. No need for it here, it will evaporate and bless the gift of itself somewhere else in the world. Too cold and it will work to preserve its freshness by transforming to ice. It can destroy just as well as it sculpts. It can house life and in the same breath erode it. Water quenches the fire but doesn't stop there, but nourishes, pours into, protects, grows, rebuilds. So go ahead, rise up but do it like an ocean wave. Go crashing down only to come right back. Erode those systemic barriers, but be a monsoon. Shower them with so much of your rage, but leave flowers and budding crops in the process. Safeguard your people with a fury, but be like the glaciers, which love fresh water so much they have been calmly rock solid to protect it for thousands of years. Be like the water that baptizes a baby, that purifies a Muslim five times a day before prayer. Moses may not be here to split the Red Sea anymore, but the pharaohs of our time without a doubt will drown in our love. In what world could we create if we all watered our own little apple trees? If we didn't abandon them to chase the fire but instead nourish them? There is nothing more exhilarating than uprooting the walls, but there is nothing more rewarding than cultivating the bridges. No evil is greater than the divine power of our love, and perhaps changing the world is too big an ambition. 
but there are endless possibilities when planting new seeds.